Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and this is part 2 of getting the most out of EV for beginners. This particular episode looks at volumetrics. Do check out my website for other courses and do check the description for other videos in the playlist. So if we want to get nice looking volumetrics, there's a couple of things we need to have ticked. First of all let's put something in our scene that's a bit more interesting, so I'll delete the default cube and add a monkey and I will subdivide it twice with Control 2 and that will give it two subdivisions and I'll right click on it and shade smooth. Now in order to get volumetrics to look nice, you'll need some lights in your scene. So here's one light, I'll just grab that so it's a bit closer to my monkey. Left click to select and G to grab. Shift D will duplicate that so I can create another one over here. And two lights will be fine for now. These are just point lights. So if I go to my lighting tab, you'll see they're on the point light setting. That means they just shine everywhere. So sort of omnidirectional lighting. What's also quite nice in EV are spotlights. Maybe I'll change one to a spotlight. As you can see there, you can use this yellow thing to pull the spotlight around and make it point at things. And if you move over an object, it will sort of snap to that object and point at that object, which is quite handy. I'll move this point light to the other side, like that. With the spotlight settings, you've got things like the size here, and you can see the different things that that does. This area here is the fade, so if I press the blend, you can see that going down, and the size is obviously the size of the cone. So we'll have it about there. Let's go to the shading tab now, or the shading workspace. And we can't see much because we're in look dev mode, we need to go to rendered mode to see our volumetrics and lighting effects. So again, not much is going on here, but we're seeing the effects of the spotlight and the point light on the monkey at the moment. The first thing you want to set up is your world. So we go down to the shader editor and click on world, and we need to add in a volume scatter node. So shift A to add, or you can go to the add menu here, but shift A is the shortcut, shader, volume scatter. Then you can bring that down there. Drag and drop the volume to the volume and then we have some fog in our scene. We can hardly see anything though. If it doesn't appear straight away, if you just move around your scene slightly, the effects suddenly appear. At the moment it's too dense. So let's turn down the density to 0.1 and you can see the volumetrics coming in. Now if you don't see the volumetrics working, you need to go over to your render tab and make sure volumetrics is ticked. Now if I click on the disclosure arrow, you can see that volumetric lighting now seems to be default in Blender 2.8. And I don't think that's going to change, but if it does, you need to tick the boxes here. Let's have volumetric shadows as well. That should give us some shadows as well, but we can't see them that well. Now to increase and improve our volumetrics, you've got the tile size here. If I bring this down, it will bring more quality out. So four pixels, for example. And when you finally render, you can turn it down to two pixels. You can also turn the samples up to 128. Do be aware that this will have more effect on your computer's performance. So the more detailed you go in here, the slightly slower render times, but more to do with your instant render when moving around the scene. Now we're starting to see an effect on the monkey and in our scene. And with the volume scatter node, you might want to change the anisotropy, and that's to do with how the light scatters. So basically just fiddle around with that until you get something you like. I think about there looks good. I'm starting to see some shadows. That's the sort of look I'm looking for. What you'll want to do as well is experiment with your lighting. So with my spotlight selected, I can then go into my light and let's say change the color. And that looks quite interesting. Also the power is set in watts now. So it should be that if you go from cycles to EV, they should be very similar. And you can think about wattage in terms of your light bulbs. I would say 50 watts is your average light bulb, so it's not particularly bright. And for film lights, a thousand watts is not unusual. And now we, if we change the spotlight size, you can see the effect that that's having and the blend just there, and it's much more visible. Now at the moment, I don't think this looks so great, and that's because our background color is gray. If we change this to black, that's helping a bit, and maybe the color of our fog, we can sort of make it slightly bluey or something. It's looking a bit better. That will make a difference how zoomed into your object you are. So if I'm zooming out now, you can see more effects of the lights and the fog, and zooming in, it's more scattered. I think to get the full effects of volumetrics, you need more objects in your scene and therefore more shadows happening. Also, volumetrics are really nice when you have camera movement. So I would say there's two rules for good volumetric lighting. The first one is using lots of objects and lots of lights in interesting locations. Curtis Holt has a really nice tutorial on that about using lighting for effects. Links in the description. And the second one of my rules is to have some camera movement to really see the full effects of the fog. Now one other thing that's nice to do with volumetrics is what's called flags or cookies. Those are things that go in front of your light and they kind of create shapes out of your light. A good example of this, if I delete one of these lights for now, and I'm going to use this point light here. I'm going to click on the light 
and press Shift S, cursor to select it. That means any new objects will be added here. Shift A, and I'll just add in a UV sphere. Now that's completely covered our light. I'm going to go back to my layout so I can see what's going on a bit easier, and I get the full viewport. Let's go to edit mode and face mode. Edit mode with tab and face mode with three on your keyboard. And I want to deselect all by tapping A twice or pressing Alt A to remove any selection and then select random. So select menu, then select random. Now if I press delete to get rid of these faces, I'm left with some areas that the light can go through. So now let's go back to shading and you can see suddenly we see an interesting effect. I just come out of edit mode and click it off my object. So you can see the effect in two ways, one on the volumetrics, we're getting some interesting shadows in our fog, but we're also getting an effect on our monkey. Now again, if I move my camera, it's tricky to see because the live update isn't doing so well at real-time rendering, but you can sort of see the effects of that volumetrics. What can be really interesting is if you take your object and you rotate it round, and animate that rotation. And lastly, do remember to add a bit of color to your lights. That's always a nice, interesting look. So there we have it, Volumetrics in Eevee. Do look out for the next episodes, and do remember to go across to my website. All the links are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.